Let's talk about iOS 11. So iOS 11 is almost here. And by almost here, I mean a few hours away. Now, the beta is launching, is launching today at WWDC. The final version is not launching until September. So uh, if, you, if you know how to install a beta, if you're a developer, then you will be able to get your hands on iOS 11 today on the beta, even though it's going, it's going to be really unstable. But yeah, the final version in September. And until then, here's everything you need to know, everything we know at the moment uh, in terms of iOS 11. So there we go, 20 features that we are expecting to see in iOS 11. Let's see which one of these uh, we're actually going to see later on today. So I'm Daniel, grab some popcorn and uh, yeah, enjoy. Okay, so the first feature that we're going to see is no more 32-bit support. So iOS 11 is going to be a full 64-bit operating system. So what does this mean? Well, it means that one, apps that haven't been optimized or updated for 64-bit support won't actually work at all in iOS 11. And we actually started getting these messages yesterday with apps that haven't been updated for 64-bit support. So there you go, apps are already being killed. Well, the ones that haven't been updated at least. And no more 32-bit support also means that devices that have 32-bit processors won't support iOS 11 anymore. So if you have something like an iPhone 5 uh, or an iPad mini 1, basically all devices that don't have an Apple A7 processor or newer won't be supporting iOS 11. Now, the second thing that we're expecting to see is finally some massive Siri improvements. So Siri is getting much smarter than before. So Siri is finally getting contextual awareness uh, which up until now was kind of limited. Uh, now, if you want to ask Siri a question uh, and you ask her a question and you want to ask her a different question based on the first question, you'll have to uh, ask the second question all over again. So you'll have to repeat everything again because she doesn't know what you've said before. Google Assistant is much better uh, when it comes to contextual awareness and Siri is supposedly going to be even better than Google Assistant. So you'll finally be able to have actual conversations with Siri. At least this is what the rumors say. I really hope that this is indeed the case. Let me know in the comments, what do you guys think about Siri at the moment? Do you think she works well enough? Do you actually use it every day? Uh, yeah, what do you guys think about Siri at the moment? Next up, the control center is also said to be getting some improvements as well. So uh, there are some rumors suggesting that we'll finally be able to customize the actual control center. So add our own apps instead of having to use the ones that Apple give you in a control center. And the control center is said to become quite a bit larger than the current one that occupies 50% of the display. This new one is said to occupy 75% of the display. So more controls and hopefully uh, customizable apps this time. Number four, night mode or dark mode has been a really requested feature in even iOS 9, I believe, and iOS 10 as well. So in iOS 10.3, everyone expected a night mode, which never ended happening. Now, if you want to enable night mode, you actually have to go into accessibility settings and invert the colors. And obviously this is not the regal night mode. Now, this is most likely coming, even if it's not coming in the first release in beta one of iOS 11. Uh, most likely because of the iPhone 8. The iPhone 8 is going to come with an OLED display and having a black background and a black menu on an OLED display is just amazing because you can only you only have to light up the pixels that you actually use. So the battery life will be much improved. That's why on the S8 or the S7, you have quite a lot of dark themes that actually improve the battery quite a lot. So yeah, really excited for dark mode on uh, on iOS 11. Next up, split screen support for the iPhone is finally set to come in iOS 11. So currently we have this uh, on the iPad, even on the iPad mini. So you can use two apps at the same time. And on the iPhone 7 Plus, apparently this is also going to come as well. The iPhone 7 Plus and also the upcoming iPhone 8. The only difference would be that on the iPad, you have a vertical interface and on the iPhone, uh, the apps would be positioned like this, so horizontal. So the display would be split into two squares. And also the camera app is said to be getting a redesign finally. This time we are expecting to see the controls in the camera app as well, because at the moment you actually have to go into settings and if you wanna change the resolution for a video or the frame rate, you have to do it from there, which is, I mean, it's 2017. Android has had this from the very start. So why? Please, please, Tim. And some new wallpapers are also coming in iOS 11. So we actually got a couple of new wallpapers, three of them with the iPad Pro 12.9 inches and iOS 10.3.3. So these are most likely going to be translated uh, to the iPhone, and then a couple of more wallpapers just exclusive to iOS 11. Just Apple, please stop removing all the wallpapers. Just add new ones. I mean, I think the iPhone has enough storage to handle like 20 wallpapers, I think. 
And FaceTime is also said to be getting some improvements with multi-user support. So the ability to have a video chat with multiple people at the same time. At the moment, you can only have a video chat with one person. Uh, so you have to use multiple devices. Just joking. You have to use uh, Hangouts or Skype if you want to have a group video chat. Finally, this is going to be possible in FaceTime and iOS 11. And Siri is also said to be getting a new interface with Google Now cards. I mean, not Google Now cards, but cards that are similar uh, to Google Now or Bixby on the S8. So these cards would show you the weather, uh, the latest news, your calendar schedule and so on. Sort of like things that you have in the notification center. So this might be moved to either the Siri display or even better, the control center, which I would say that these things are going to be. And even though this is not an iPhone exclusive feature, the Apple Pencil is also said to be getting some pretty big improvements as well when it comes to functionality. So the Apple Pencil 2 is coming. In case you want to know more about the new iPads that are going to be introduced at today's event, I've done a WWDC recap video, I mean what to expect video, and iPad Pro 2 final leaks and rumors. But yeah, Apple Pencil 2 is coming, and along with that, Apple Pencil 1 support is getting improved with a couple of new features. So the ability to zoom and pan and scroll with the Apple Pencil, and also the ability to launch a couple of apps when needed. So the Notes app, for example, similar to what we have in, uh, on the Samsung Galaxy Note devices. Apple Music is also said to be getting some improvements as well. So apparently it's going to be redesigned uh, once again so that the font is actually smaller because now it's quite huge. It feels a bit weird on large screen devices. So smaller font, smaller interface, and apparently it's going to be focused on video quite a lot. Speaking of video, the Apple TV app is coming to multiple countries. So at the moment, it's only available in the US. So it will be coming with iOS 11 in the UK and more countries as well, finally. Now, also speaking of TV, there have been some rumors that Apple is working on an Apple Music-like service for, uh, for movies. So something similar to Netflix, an Apple TV service on which you can actually watch any movies you, you wish. And uh, if you take a look at Netflix and if you take a look at iTunes, the iTunes movie library is actually the largest movie library in the world. So who's excited for an Apple TV, Apple movies? service plan. Apple's Netflix. Who's decided for that? It's probably not coming outside the US anytime soon, so it might be introduced at WWDC and then released uh, later on in the year. Who's excited for that? Echo Storage is also said to be getting some improvements as well, finally, because at the moment it's kind of a joke. I mean, you have five gigabytes and that's for everything. So that's for photos, videos, and that's for all the app data, that's for all of your backups. So five gigabytes is definitely not enough. Apple did bump uh, the storage plants so you can buy more storage if you wish to and Apple increased that with the iPhone 7's launch back in September but we are expecting some more increases so from 5 gigabytes to most likely 15 gigabytes of free storage and then the, those plans to be increased even more. Speaking of storage, iCloud Photos is also said to be getting some pretty major improvements as well so at the moment it's pretty limited. So obviously you can have unlimited storage if you pay for it but Google Photos they actually allow you to store unlimited so you don't actually have, have to pay for anything, unlimited storage, and Apple only offers you five gigabytes for not even just photos. Now, Google Photos, you're limited to 80 megapixels for photos and uh, 1080p for videos, unless you actually use your own storage and basically pay for it. So hopefully Apple decides to compete with Google and offer unlimited storage for 12 megapixel photos and 4K videos. That would be, that would be awesome. What photos service do you guys use? Is it Google Photos? Is it Apple Photos? I honestly keep switching between those two like every few months because there's so many advantages to Google Photos and so many advantages to Apple Photos. I mean, they, they should just make a photo service together. That would be the perfect photo service. Obviously, that's never going to happen. So, And supposedly, there are a couple of upcoming design changes, small design changes coming in iOS 11. So something mostly for large screen devices because at the moment, iOS 10 does look a bit weird on the iPhone Plus models or the iPads. It looks as if the icons are just too large and there's so much unused space. And there are some reports that Apple will be implementing a smart low battery mode on, uh, on iOS 11. So for example, this would be apparently geo geolocation based. So if you leave your house and you only have like 20% battery, 10% battery, uh, then low power mode will automatically enable instead of you having to tap that low power mode enable button. So pretty cool feature to have. And the Apple Wallet app is also said to be getting some improvements. So a major redesign is coming and apparently some social integration as well, which is a tiny bit weird, but yeah, this is said to be coming social integration in Apple Wallet. So most likely the ability to share different, different cards with multiple people. And also the ability to send money to your friends via Apple Pay and iMessages. So this would be pretty useful for, uh, for some people, I don't really use, I don't really send money to friends that much, but 
yeah, just saying, this would be a pretty cool feature to have. What do you guys think sending money via Apple Pay and iMessages? Would that be useful to you or not? And a redesigned Apple Home app is also expected because this one is pretty badly designed. There is no way to group multiple things together. I mean, there is, but then you don't have them separately. So, I mean, there are so many downsides to the Apple Home app at the moment. A bit clumsy to use. That's why I prefer using my Philips Hue app for my lights instead. And a separate sleep monitoring app might be coming in iOS 11. So, so Apple has teamed up with a startup called uh, Bedit. They actually focus on smart sleep monitoring. And the Apple Watch is also said to be getting some sort of sleep tracking capabilities in watchOS 4. Now, you do have this app. Some of you might have heard of it. It's called Sleep Cycle. No, this is, this is not a sponsored video. But yeah, Sleep Cycle is pretty similar to this. It can track your sleep. It uses the accelerometer and the microphone. And finally, the last thing that's getting a pretty big improvement is AirPlay or Apple Music and AirPlay. So at the moment, if you want to play a song on your iMac and you have your iPhone with you, you actually you cannot actually do that. You have to go on the iMac and do that separately. Same goes for any device you, you have. So if you use Spotify, you know that there is an option there to uh, switch the audio source. So to basically switch your audio output source. So you can switch it to something like an Apple TV, an iMac, and so on. You cannot actually do that on Apple Music just yet. So audio output switch on Apple Music finally coming in iOS 11. It took Apple two years to implement this change. I mean, come on, Tim. So there you go, everything that we are currently expected to see in iOS 11. So yeah, iOS 11 is launching today, the beta at least. So feel free to subscribe if you want to see more iOS 11 coverage and also don't forget to enable notifications on my channel so that you're notified uh, whenever I upload a brand new epic video. Really excited for iOS 11, but what do you guys want to see in iOS 11? So what's your top five most requested features that you want to see in iOS 11? Might be a bit too late to ask for these because iOS 11 is pretty much finished, but yeah, the betas can change. So hopefully Apple is watching this video and looking at your comments. Also, if you think this video like, if you have enjoyed it, to let me know. And also, let me know in the comments if you're epic enough to make it until the end by saying I was epic enough to make it until the end of this video. But yeah, this was pretty much it. So I'll see you at WWDC. Not really, because I won't be there. But I'll see you tomorrow in a cool new video. So thank you for watching this video. I'm Daniel, and I'll see you guys in my next one. Son of Deck, signing out. Cheers.